Hi, Yarnabees. Crochet B here. I um, had a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about, and then I wanted to uh, show you um, some more of the hats that I've made. So basically, oh, by the way, still married, two weeks. So this is the famous ring. So for those of you that did not hear the story, Sandy and I went to every jewelry store in Nanaimo and there was nobody that had a ring that would fit my giant hands. So we actually had to have something custom made and uh, a rush job in order to get it ready in time for the wedding on the 14th. So I think they did a wonderful job. Apparently, um, in order to get the steel for this, they had to melt down one of the boat anchors for one of the crab boats on the deadliest catch. So there's a boat running around without an anchor, but thank you very much. Um, and I also, um, I wanted to take a moment to kind of respond to, I watched Sandy's video that she did at, right after the wedding where she's all like, woohoo, and she was uh, sort of, wondering or um disappointed that I wasn't more more giddy and more woo -woo -woo, like 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 she was so um I want to explain to you guys kind of kind of how that goes so here's the deal um I met Sandy a little over eight years ago um and at that time I was come at my marriage had come 35 year marriage had come to an end um you know not in a good way, like most marriages that come to an end. So I was a little, uh, a little jaded, a little, I don't know. I was definitely not looking to, uh, to get together with anybody again anytime soon. In fact, I told everybody that I knew, my family, my friends, everybody that I'd been married my whole adult life, 35 years, and I was never ever going to, um, get married again. I was never going to live with anybody again. And I was just going to, you know, enjoy myself and date and have a variety of women and all of that. And um, I can honestly say I, I meant every single word of it at the time. But then one day um, I got a phone call from a hysterical woman on the phone whose uh, cat Bella had just had diarrhea all over the apartment. So she needed me to come right away. So I showed up. This is a very uh, typical call. I get this kind of thing all the time. Um, so, you know, I, I, buzz the, I buzz the buzzer. She lets me in. I have my stuff. The door opens. I walk in and I turned around and I took one look at the most amazing eyes I've ever seen. Uh, the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. And it's like I was struck by a bolt of lightning, like, uh, I don't know how else to describe it, but um, I've never experienced anything like that before. I was not a big believer in the whole uh, love at first sight thing or whatever, but I kind of did one of these and Sandy kind of did the same thing. And um, I knew, I knew at that very second when I, when I looked at her that I had just met the person I was going to spend the rest of my life with. So, um, so I was all giddy and oogie googie a long time ago. Um, so I, I just hadn't, um, so there's a line from one of my favorite movies, usual suspects and Kevin Spacey plays this amazing character called Kaiser Sosa, who's like the ultimate bad guy. Um, and he says that uh, in the movie, he says the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. So I'd like to say the greatest trick that I've ever pulled is convincing that girl to fall in love with me. I don't know how I did it. Um, I, if I knew how I did it and how I could replicate it, I'm sure I could sell it for millions of dollars. But um Anyway, um, so that's the deal. So in my heart, she's been my wife from the second I saw her. I knew that I would, I would never want to be with anybody else again. And uh, she had my heart and soul right from the the moment. So um, anyway, 
that's my story. You can call it an excuse or whatever. But so when we finally got married, it was just the culmination of everything that I was already feeling. And I'm, I'm happy we did it. I like wearing my wedding ring and acting like a married guy. Um, I have a silicone ring that I wear when I'm working and, and stuff because it's not good to have a ring ring when you're cleaning upholstery and jamming your hand down things and stuff. You can get it caught. So, and it also, when I'm lifting buckets and stuff with this ring, it's, it kind of hurts when I get the rim of the bucket on the ring and stuff. So, uh, anyway, that's that story. So let's get on with, with the hat. So, um, as some of you know, um, Sandy and I do an awful lot of craft fairs in the winter. And, uh, the challenge is always, uh, to try to get in as many craft fairs as was, we'd like to get in because it's, you know, you've got to apply way ahead of time. And also to make sure that we have enough stock made. So luckily with uh, with COVID, we hardly went in any craft fairs for two years. So Sandy was able to build up a fair bit of stock. Um, and we went in one last year and sold quite a bit. But this year I wanted us to... So we were signed up for three that promised to be like super duper uh, craft fairs where we should do really well. So Sandy's issue was... Um, it is very tiring, very exhausting to do a four day craft fair. So of course I'm going to help her with that. And the other thing is having enough stock made because she's got this guy that just sells everything. Um, so I'm able to sell it faster than she can make it. Then she's always scrambling, trying to make more. So I told her that I was going to learn to make hats so that I could help her. So the problem is when you've got the world's biggest hands, there is no crochet hook that can fit in there that enables you to do any of that. But we um, we found out about the Addy machines and we thought we might give that a try. So we tried um, a less expensive one, had all kinds of problems, couldn't get it to work. And then our wonderful friend Sandy Duda actually sent me uh, a brand new Addy machine. And, um, you know, I learned that... <laughs> Crafting's not as easy as Sandy makes it look. I had all kinds of issues, drop stitches and things, uh, whatever. But we've kind of learned to to do it pretty good. So the setup that I have, I've kind of explained it, but I'm going to quickly show you. So this is the, the setup that I use. So this table is actually upside down so that I've got the Addy sitting in the space, which allows... All of the yarn to fall freely and this was a big one of the reasons we were dropping stitches is on a table this stuff gets all bunched up like this and then it gets uneven so as I was saying <laughs> little video glitch there so the gravity allows this to fall evenly all the way around so it doesn't bunch up and cause the drop stitches the other thing that we learned was that it's best to um, um, not if you don't have to combine balls of yarn together use just one ball and not try to do multi colors by adding different colors of yarn because every time you do a join you're also much more likely to drop a stitch and have a problem so um i haven't got it perfected i like this hat you're looking at actually i got almost completely finished and then i noticed that i dropped a couple stitches had to frog it and start all over again so and this is now ready for the next stage. So basically I get it to this point and then I have to give this to Sandy and Sandy has to get it off and do all the fine stitching to finish off the hat. So um, where we're running into a little bit of trouble is um, I'm cranking like a maniac and then I'm leaving this for Sandy to finish off and then Sandy's not finishing them off because she's so busy with doing her own stuff. So uh, the last hat sat for three or four days before she finally got around to it. So, which gets me a little frustrated because I'm really trying hard to get them done. But I have um, almost 70 done already and I said I wanted 200. So I'm well on my way. So then the other thing we noticed. So um, when I showed you my first bunch of hats, they all had a, a brim and they all looked kind of almost like a toque. Um, and then we noticed when we started making them that actually these were very versatile. So when we go to the craft fairs, um, we sell uh, beanie style hats that Sandy crochets that are very close to the skull, like a beanie. And then we sell the slouchies, 
which have the extra bit at the back, the slouches over that the young people and a lot of the ladies really like. In fact, when we um, have the hats, we seem to sell out of slouchies like so fast that we're always challenged to make it. So what I noticed is when I when I finished um, the hat, every hat I made was already long enough to be a slouchie. So this is one that I've made. So as you can see, we've got plenty of extra material in the back. And then we also noticed that, so basically what I ended up discovering was that these hats are almost like four hats in one. You can have it like this. You can put a brim up and have it, have it as a brim hat. And then the other thing we discovered that was really neat was we could actually turn them inside out and get a completely different pattern and sometimes a completely different color on the underside. And then once again, if you wanted to do the brim and, and have it as a, a brim hat. So basically these are like four hats in one. So I told Sandy I was going to uh, advertise them as four in, four in one hats. And we're going to have a sign that says four in one hats. And when people want to know why it's a four in one hat, I can demonstrate the four different ways that you can wear one hat. So you could have a different hat every day for four days. You'll never get bored and you can have all of that for just $25. So I'm pretty pumped about making these. I'm pretty sure I'm going to sell um, quite a few of them. And the other thing about these hats that is really big in our neck of the woods so we don't get severe winters here um we might get it a few days of snow but like we don't get like this 50 below 40 below stuff so one of the biggest issues with sandy's crochet hats people they say i like them but they're too warm for this climate i would never wear it because i don't it, i would be too hot well these um are actually quite thin um so that you can actually sandy's been wearing hers already like in the spring you can wear them in the fall and you can wear them in the winter and they're not too hot uh, the other thing i've learned when you're making these is you do not want to use yarn that is too thick it's very hard on the addy and it also tends you tend to drop way more stitches so if you have a lighter weight yarn and you're able to to crank them out at a, you know you have to get your sort of proper speed if you go too fast there's a problem if you go too slow it takes forever so you have to get like a steady little pace and try to be very consistent and keep an eye on it and I'm kind of getting the hang of it um, you know I screw one up every once in a while then I got a frog it or whatever but um, I'm able to do quite a few so I'm just going to quickly show you uh, some of the ones that I've made so we get a bit of an idea so this is one that I just finished um, just finished yesterday it's still warm and you can see beautiful beautiful colors on this. I'm just going to whip through these all very, very, very quickly, guys. Um, so I've got this guy. I really like this one. This one is very similar to the, one of the ones. Sandy kept one that was very similar to this that she really, really likes. Um, and then I have some where I've uh, like three different types of yarn together. Like so. Again, quite a lot of variety of colors um, and I've got one in the browns the browns and the red very autumnal and for whatever reason this one had a little stitch that was completely different color it's not bleached out it just happened to be there so even though I can get two to three hats off of one ball depending on how big the ball is they all come out just a little bit different so this one's uh, kind of nice with the blues and the oranges. Um, and then we've got this guy. We've got this one. And we got the nice little purple. This was a little bit of yarn left over for the purple fringe there. Um, there's this one. So I don't know how well the camera really really shows the colors, but there's quite a quite a variety. 
And then I just made one with, um, I had a little bit of yarn left over, which was this, and I just added just plain block to it. So we do get some people that like uh, just one color, just plain one color. I don't know. I kind of like the ones that are multicolor, but for somebody looking at that with a little bit of that on the end. And again, as you can see, some of them are, are similar, similar, but not exactly the same. Okay, we already saw one that kind of looked like that. I really like this color. Sandy looks really nice on Sandy when she wears hers. Then I did this guy, which I kind of liked. And then I did one that was just almost a plain red. And as you can see, again, when you reverse it, you get this. Two different colors, or if you want the plain red, you just pull it out that way. So very versatile. So again, another one sort of similar. And some are a little bit longer than others only because of uh, the weight of the yarn that you use. I tend to do um, about 150 rows. And uh, unless it's a very thick yarn, that's one that turned out to be a little bit shorter. But again, I think really quite nice colors. As you can see. Okay, so I'm not going to... Well, this is one I did with a very thick yarn. So this one would actually be suitable for a little bit colder climate. And it's just plain green with the little black speckles here. But it's... Uh, it's quite thick, but again, you find when you use the thick yarn that it gets to be really um, hard to crank it. And I worry a little bit about um, straining the machine. I don't want to break it because it was so nice of Sandy to, to, give, to give. So so in this last little while, I've probably made, you know, close to 40 hats, I guess since the last video so i've been cranking them out pretty good combination of you know i'm back working and things are getting busier and then the other thing is uh, i managed to find a dragon boat team that i can get on which is huge 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 for me and my my mental health um i'm just uh, i gotta have a way to get that i've got a real competitive monster inside of me that needs to be fed and the only way, in a nice way, it can be fed that keeps me out of jail is to find something that I can compete in. So, so we've we've done quite a few. So, if you see any you like, um, you know, they are for sale. Um, they're twenty five dollars. You can get a hold of Sandy on any of the various ways you get a hold of her. If there's a particular one you liked or you want to see something in particular, um, you know, we'd be happy to ship them, get them out to you guys. I think there, I have no doubt that uh, once we go to the craft fair and we display them the way that we display them, that we're going to, these suckers are going to sell like hotcakes. I really think so. Again, especially because in our market, it's not... Um, super super warm so the oh this is kind of a nice one look at that um so the people that are always complaining oh it's too hot not cold enough here i think i'll be able to show them that these would be quite quite wearable so anyway that's a few of the different ones that i've had just to give you a bit of an idea how it goes okay so um i did want to tell you one last thing um it's kind of a kind of a secret I'm going to tell you guys. So don't tell Sandy, okay? So one of the things I love the most about Sandy is that she just has no idea, no concept, no realization um, about how truly beautiful she is. Um, so I think 
my greatest fear is that one day she's going to be able to see what I see and I think the rest of the world sees and realize like, wow, I can do way better than, you know, this guy. So, so do me a favor. Don't tell her, okay? Um, and then there's one last thing. Um, one thing that she doesn't realize is, you know, she says, I don't, I wasn't showing a lot of the emotion and whatever. Well, part of it is I just have this, this overwhelming feeling like, you know, somebody that robbed a bank and got away with it. So I know that she's way, way, way out of my league. I don't know how I pulled this off, but, um, so I'm just trying to be cool and, you know, not, you know, everything in here is going, it's all going around in here, but on the outside, I'm trying to be cool. So anyway, um, but what she doesn't know is every morning, you know, when I wake up and I get up around five or six and he's sleeping, um, the first thing I do is look over to make sure that she's still there beside me because there's a, a part of me that thinks that I just kind of dreamed her up and that this is really too good to be true. So, um, but it's been over eight years and she's still there. So <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all for the, uh, the nice uh, well wishes for the wedding. We're, you know, we're both very happy um, living our life, doing our thing. You know, I'm trying to, to help with the hats and to help her be ready for craft fair season. And now life has gotten crazier now that uh, I'm back paddling. We're hoping that we're going to get Sandy back uh, dragon boating. But, you know, she's a little nervous because she hasn't for almost three years and with her back and everything. So, um, you know, part of me really wants to drag her out. But the other part wants to make sure that she's she's not going to hurt herself. So. I'll let her come when she's ready to come. But we're back to, you know, racing and being away. And, you know, we're going to be away for two, three days to Victoria and three days to Penticton and, and all of that. So uh, I love it, but it, it makes it for busy times, crazy times. Uh, we're in the summer, so uh, business is starting to pick up for me. And, um, you know, we're dashing and we're doing all those things. But anyway, um, we live in a great place. Um, I'm in love with a great gal, you know, and, uh, I couldn't be happier. So, you know, the last piece of the puzzle was to get back to the sport I love and to be able to do that. Cause I didn't think it was going to happen because that sport, like a lot of things was devastated during COVID. Uh, we probably have a third of the teams that we had before. So we're kind of trying to build it up again. We're hoping we will. So anyway, I hope that wasn't too boring for you guys. Um, so really liking these hats. I think they're coming out really well. And, um, you know, I'm going to keep cranking them out. You know, Sandy's going to keep fighting me when I ask her to finish them because she's busy. But hopefully we'll get them all done. And come craft fair season, we'll be all loaded and ready to go and, and, uh, and get it done. So, okay. So thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye guys.